Hi there! I hope you're staying safe and keeping healthy and positive during these crazy and unprecedented times. My name is Sarah Kidd and today I'm going to be showing you how you can make art using bacteria. Okay, <laughs> as crazy and weird as that sounds, you can make art using bacteria. It's actually an art form called agar art, which bacteria acts as the paint and it is then swapped onto agar plates. The end product is super cool. Throughout this experiment, you will get to learn more about bacteria too. Specifically, what it is, how we collect bacteria, bacteria transmission, and bacteria growth. Let's get right into it. First off, let's break down what we need for this experiment. We need an agar kit, a fridge, and patience because this experiment takes a long time for the bacteria to grow. The agar kit contains everything that we need to grow and collect the bacteria. I got mine off of Amazon for less than $30. The agar kit includes agar powder to make the agar solution, plates, and swabs. The chilled agar and the agar plates act as food and shelter for the bacteria, and the swabs are what is used to collect the bacteria. Speaking about collecting bacteria, let's move on to the next section to see how I collected the bacteria and to learn more about what bacteria is. For this portion, we're gonna have to collect the bacteria, all right? But where are we gonna get it from? Trick question. Bacteria is literally everywhere. To collect the bacteria, I'm gonna use the swabs included in the kit to swab down surfaces. I swab down door handles, the bottom of my shoe, my bathroom tap, and my living room carpet. All right, so we know where bacteria is. We collected all the samples. What is bacteria though? Bacteria are simple single-celled microorganisms that are naked to the human eye, but have diverse functions depending on the type of bacteria that it is. This is why we can't see the bacteria even after we swab it. It's just too small to see. So we would need a powerful microscope to be able to see it. Bacteria can be responsible for all different types of things. They could either be harmful, helpful, or vital to humans. Harmful bacteria are bacteria that can cause diseases to humans, making them pathogenic. Helpful bacteria are bacteria that can help humans. These bacteria can be found within our medications and antibiotics. Vital bacteria are bacteria that humans need. Without these bacteria, it might cause an imbalance within our systems. It's possible that some of the areas that I swab down contain pathogenic bacteria, so bad bacteria that causes diseases. This is because these areas are commonly touched surfaces, which allows for a lot of bacteria transmission to happen. That's why so many doctors stress the importance of hand washing and hygiene to stop the spread of disease. Our next step is to take the agar plates and swab our swabs onto the agar plates. Imagine your hand being the cotton swab and you touch one surface and then without washing your hands, you touch another surface. Now that bacteria has been transmitted from one surface to another surface and that is bacteria transmission. It's just the movement of bacteria. It's important to remember that our swab in this situation can represent any object that can move. Even our hands can be the swab in this situation, obviously. Some bacteria don't even need objects to live on because they could just live in air or they live in water. Don't be worried though. Most likely the bacteria being spread us around us right now is harmless. Next, we have to put the swabbed agar plates in the refrigerator to let it grow. The bacteria feasts on the agar solution in the agar plates, providing it food and shelter to grow. Refrigerating the agar plates allows it to grow a little bit slower than normal. Bacteria grows by dividing itself. The speed at which bacteria grows is modeled by the bacteria growth curve, which bacteria starts to grow, levels off, and then starts to die. For our bacteria, we want to take it out right after the rapid growth phase. So once it hits that little peak, I'll be checking on it throughout the week to see its growth. We finally made it to the part where we could start painting, woohoo! The bacteria has now grown and we could start. You can see here on these plates that there's a lot of mold growing on them. Um, 
which is kind of surprising meaning that I might have mold on my surfaces um, but considering that some of these surfaces have might have food touching on them so for example the carpet some food might fall on the carpet um, mold is bound to grow obviously um, but other than that there's also a lot of red yellow orange and white colors that we can work with and make some art with as you can see, I'm swapping those colors to create a sun because those colors reminded me of the sun. I was surprised to learn that the bacteria grown on the plate is actually soft and can be wiped off because I thought before this experiment, those colors were solid and you couldn't wipe them off or they couldn't move at all until I actually tried this experiment and learned that they're soft and can be wiped off. After painting with the bacteria, we'll put it in the fridge once more to let it grow and then we can finally see our end product. All right, we finally made it. We could finally see what the end product looks like. Yay! <laughs> look at that, look at that sun. Isn't that amazing? We made that from bacteria. That's insane. Um, it looks a little bit overgrown, but other than that, it looks amazing to be honest. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video and it has interested you more in bacteria Maybe you even want to try this experiment now. Go for it! Anyways, stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you for watching. Bye!